Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Writer's Review, brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And today, I really want to talk about a show that has quickly grown near and dear to my heart, The Dragon Prince. This Netflix series has been an absolute joy to watch for a number of reasons. See, for me and myself personally, I am a huge Lord of the Rings fan. And just to give you an idea of just how much of a Lord of the Rings nerd I am, I once took a kid to task for almost an hour explaining why he misunderstood the role of Balrogs and Maiar overall within the overall context of the Silmarillion and how that compared to power levels with Gandalf the Grey and leading into Gandalf's destiny and so on and so forth and everyone who was around was just sitting in awe and finally one guy my close friend just tapped me on the shoulder and was just like Lars um uh I think enough is enough and that tells you just that should tell you a little bit just how deep I can get into Lord of the Rings lore um and when I watch the Dragon Prince what I see is I see some writers who are willing to take the epicness that Tolkien gave us with his fantasy legendarium and take it to the next step one of the things that I've seen a lot from other uh, writers and reviewers is that when you look at a series, for instance, like Game of Thrones, a lot of people say that, well, someone like George R. R. Martin or Robert Jordan or even Brandon Sanderson Senpai is the rightful inheritor of what Tolkien gave to us. And, you know, I think it's great that we can really enjoy ourselves in, fan in all different kinds of fantasy realms, but I feel like what Tolkien gave to us, and when he gave us this framework of fantasy, we were meant to go the next step. And when I look at The Dragon Prince, I feel that even though both seasons that we've gotten so far are really short, and the animation, yeah, I can see where people are coming from when they say that they don't quite like it, the writing overall is really going in a direction that modern fantasy needs to go it's okay to enjoy and love the past and in fact if you want to write a story that is more along the lines of what tolkien had then more power to you that is fantastic i'll love it uh if you write it what if you write it well but fantasy needs to continue to evolve so let me explain then a little bit further what i mean when i look at the dragon prince i am enthralled with the elves first and foremost I think it's really, really cool to see the elves. I mean, at first, you think that they would be your typical fantasy elf, except, well, for one thing, they've only got four fingers on each hand, and they've got horns, which is really cool. And we have different races of elves um, in conjunction with the kind of magic that they use. And this is absolutely fascinating because we now get to see not just simply, hey, here's an elf and elves are cool, but we have multiple elves and they are all super cool and all super unique. And that that just, oh my gosh, it tickles the, the writing funny bone in me. And all the right ways are just saying, look, here we can take a tried and true character type like elves, which people have honestly kind of gotten a little bit lazy in writing, and something entirely unique and different has been done with them. And Rayla as a character alone is just absolutely fantastic. I love whenever she's on the screen. Uh, she has written so well. It's great to see a uh, it's great to see an assassin who's struggling with her own moral compass and how and who has lots of questions and is trying to determine not only who she is but what her purpose is and how she can redeem herself from the tragedy of her parents and so on and so forth there's a lot uh, within her character and it's not just her but so many others as well another thing that I really like uh, about the Dragon Prince still thinking about complex characters are how so many of the villains are really ambiguous, even Viren. One of the things I like about season two is that even though we know that Viren's still a lying scumbag in so many ways, it's great to see how he genuinely cares for his children, even if he's kind of putting the mission ahead of life, which is not a morally good thing to do. 
he still cares about people and his relationship to the king was genuine and his actions to try to save the people even through dark magic were once again very genuine and though we recognize him as the villain he is so convinced that he is right that in many ways you begin to question especially as the sun elves begin to encroach on human lands you begin to wonder might he not be correct in some kind of way and i love his children claudia and soren are wonderfully morally gray characters they are fantastic to watch not only do they have really well written sibling chemistry which is very hard to find nowadays but they make incredibly realistic choices and they deal with the world in very realistic ways. That's one of the things that I think really draws people into fantasy is not only do you have these fantastical elements like elves and dragons, but people that you can relate to in those situations because you'd say, yeah, I can totally see that happening. And that is really beautiful. Another thing that I really like about this series is just how much world building it's able to pack in without it feeling overbearing. And that is something that, once again, considering just how short each season is, is fascinating and really inspiring to see what the writers have been able to accomplish. Um, the fact that we've learned so much about magic already, and we've only just been kind of looking at sky magic and dark magic, and there's so many more forms that we have still have to see. We still have five more uh, elements of magic. And then we've got Avaros showing up out of a mirror, doing even crazier, cooler things. It's neat to see that this soft brand of magic has many, many neat applications. Um, it does have rules, but its rules are not so complex that it goes into the hard magic category, um, which a lot of people nowadays in the fantasy community are tend to fall in line with hey we need more regulations once again looking to brandon sanderson senpai's uh laws of magic those are excellent guidelines to go by and most people nowadays when they think of fantasy they say okay we either go with hard magic or with george r martin's version of soft magic which is it does incredible things but it has terrible consequences at the same time and what is neat with the dragon prince is that it takes a middle ground between those two points of view it has soft magic doing all these wonderful complex things that a hard magic system can do but without bogging the viewers down with all of these many little particulars now granted on one of their websites the showrunners do show all of the different kinds of magic that there are and what you can possibly do with them and so for once again an absolute fantasy nerd like myself like this right here is for me is just hitting so many of the right notes and maybe that's really me just personally i will admit because um the books that i'm writing um a lot of them deal with a softer kind of magic system there are certain rules that cannot be broken that because they are what make magic what it is in my stories but other than that a lot of it is really literally left up to your own imagination and your own abilities and that is something that once again i can really appreciate seeing in the dragon prince and of course we have to talk about the dragons now one gripe of mine for the show is that so far we haven't really seen much of the dragons and what we have seen of them seems to fall into the normal archetype of just intelligent monsters however what is really neat when you pay attention is that the dragon king and the dragon queen really understand magic and politics for crying out loud the dragon queen commissions Moonshadow elven assassins to go and kill the king and that shows that these dragons are not just intelligent but they are politically savvy and they know how to do transactions and the likes also the fact that they knew about avaros's mirror which they kept close to them shows that they have incredible foresight and that they also understand zadia's history Though we haven't yet seen dragons really communicate beyond Zim speaking to Ezrin, and that's an interesting, unique relationship there, we haven't really seen how the dragons can fully communicate. 
yet, which I'm really looking forward to. I think that the end of season two sets it up for us to now really transition into what dragon culture is like in Zadia and to learning way more about the dragons, which I'm really looking forward to. So I'm holding out hope that just as the show has done with the elves, taking them to a whole new level, that we'll get to see the dragons as well rise to that same standard and that we'll get to see something hopefully very unique and original done with them. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, but Lars, dragons are so overdone. And yes, we know that you made a ro an overlong video about dragons before, but dragons are dragons. Well, that's one of the things that I tried to say last year in my video about writing dragons is that it's possible to write new and unique types of dragons. So I'm really hoping that the Dragon Prince can follow through with that. And finally, before I uh, sign off here, one other thing that I really, really enjoy um, has been the character arcs of not just Raylan, but also of Ezrin and Callum. Um, their dynamic is just really, really neat. And where Soren and Claudia are written extraordinarily well for blood siblings, Ezrin and Callum are half-brothers. And it is, once again, just so refreshing to see a very healthy relationship written between siblings, and especially siblings in a very awkward situation. Not only are they half-brothers, whose mom was murdered by the Dragon King, but also Ezrin as the younger brother is actually the one set to inherit the throne. And normally this would set up power dynamics and rivalries and murder in the future, but these two really come to work together and though they have their misunderstandings and they bicker at times and they make fun of each other they always make up and that is once again that's something that is fantastic to see in a fantasy relationship to see healthy relationships within a family and that is something that i think that the fantasy community could really do a, uh with a whole lot more of and that's something that i really applaud the dragon prince for is just how on point the relationships are especially when it comes to the family members and it really paints all of these characters in a wonderful complex ambiguous light and you can even see some of the good guys possibly turning bad if the right decision or in this case the wrong decision is made only someone really like Ezrin is someone who you can really believe is not going to do something stupid. He might do something naive because of his age, but he is a good child. And the rest of the characters, you can argue, are all good, except for maybe Viren. Um, and Avros, we're going to have to keep an eye on that elf there. Um, I love his narrating voice. Uh, but who he is as a character, we have yet to see. And I think that's just another reason why I'm really enjoying the show. It's fun to watch something, just as it is to read a series, that gives you a lot of great development and great answers, but at the same time teases you with tantalizing, long-reaching questions, and delivers on fantastic characters, great world-building. Overall, the Dragon Prince is a phenomenal story thus far. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly encourage you to do so. And if you have seen it, in the comment section below, tell me what some of your favorite parts of the series are and where you hope or think the series is going to go. And that's going to do it all for me for now. Um, I got to get back to writing. I am uh, super, super busy at the moment. I'm trying to reach my goal of finishing the rough draft for uh, my Space Pirates uh, novel, The Monarch Mercenaries, by the end of the month. <sighs> and I've, of course, got other things I have to do. But uh, in the meantime, please go check out our podcast episodes. We actually have a really great one coming out. Um, in just a little bit, we are going to have one of our fellow YouTubers and novice writers, uh, Zaza, joining us as a uh, guest speaker on the podcast. So really check that out and also check out her channel uh, in the meantime, Zap. I will have a link to it in the description box. And also, please go uh, check out our subreddit where you can have conversations with us about writing. And go check out our art on Tumblr, check out our writing advice on Pinterest, and send us 
links to terrible fan fictions via our Twitter at Camille's Harem. We would love to get them so we can do epic readings of them for your enjoyment. And until the next video, tschüss.